three things that you would like to share about yourself? Well, I immigrated to the United States when I was six. Um, and I guess that one of the three things that I would mention would be, uh, you know, that, that we, we didn't have much. We didn't have, we didn't have uh, you know, the ability to buy new clothes. We, we uh, you know, my, we ended up in Denver, Colorado, and my, my mom had to babysit, so we had money to eat. And, you know, we ended up wearing cl uh, secondhand clothes and drank powdered milk because that's all we could afford and expired bread. And, you know, from that, uh, you know, watching my mom and her hard work and, and being inspired by her, you know, I uh, ended up, you know, buying over 2,000 houses uh, that I rented out uh, and multiple apartment buildings and, you know, built up a, um, you know, net worth of over 50 million U.S. dollars. And, you know, I'm, pr I'm proud of that. Um, yeah, very but, impressive. That would be one thing. I've, and I've, I've owned about 18 businesses. Some have been successes and some have been equally spectacular failures. And I call those failure seminars because they've all been learning experiences. Um, and I think probably the second thing I would bring up now, now I will tell you, there's a punchline to that first point, you know, about, you know, building a $50 million net worth. I, I actually, uh, um, that was in 2006. I owned 800 houses here in Florida. And I think anybody listening knows what happened in 2007 and 2008. Yeah. Uh, so I had, I had my largest seminar ever. You know, and, and, and what I learned from that experience losing, you know, I lost 800 houses, but, but what was interesting was my multifamily portfolio did just fine, um, which, is, which is the reason that, you know, I wrote my book about multifamily investing and started my podcast about multifamily investing because I don't want people to have the same thing happen to them. Mm -hmm. I, I really believe that, at least in the United States, we're headed for a contraction pretty soon. And if people are focused on the value, of their assets versus the cash flow, they can get in trouble. So I just wanted to add that caveat to my uh, what may have sounded uh, boastful in my first point there, because you know I did get my clock cleaned. Um, now I'm I'm back now financially and have learned from that experience and I'm I'm helping other people from that experience. But so that would be the first thing. The second thing I would say really had it ingrained into me. Uh, the, the psychology of success, the, the psychology of taking action, um, the ability to recover from losing $50 million and, and not wanting to throw myself off a building, you know, and that's all mindset because as you know, Amina, 80% of your success in anything is your psychology and only 20% is the actual mechanical information. So luckily I had that, that framework to get me through 2008 and 9 and, and, and to get me back to the success that I enjoy today. So that would probably be the second thing. Oh boy, the third thing. Let's see if people know about me. Well, I suppose that, that I, I, I never went to college. I, I'm a high school graduate, barely. Okay. Uh, I will say this, you know, I, I, I have an incredible work ethic, but I think more importantly than that, you know, my son uses this against me. Uh, my my 18 year old son about going to college, he's like, you didn't go. And I said, yeah, well, I work hard and, 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 uh, <laughs> and, and, and have a really hard work ethic. But I think that the, the, the thing that I'm proud of is the fact that I'm very well read. And, and so, you know, I, I've got thousands of books and I've got a huge library and, and, you know, I, I feel like I'm probably even better read than most college, college graduates. So, you know, I, I'm not going to discourage anyone listening, particularly, people my son's age from going to college, but I will say that there are many different ways to learn. And for me, it was reading and, and, and the school of hard knocks. I like to tell people I have a PhD in results is, is believing in yourself, having self-confidence or developing that self-confidence, pushing through fear and, and, and being okay with taking action. Yeah. So. Brilliant. So my second question is, how did you get your idea for your business? How did you end up in uh, the property business or real estate, well, as you call it? Sure. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a funny story. Actually, when I was 14 years old, back to my mother again, 
my mother bought the, bought the house across the street for, um, um, let's see, I think it was around $30,000 US dollars. And when I was 17, I uh, about to graduate from high school, that house was worth in the 50s. And so just by the passage of time, she'd made $20,000. Mm. And I, although I hate math and I flunked basic math in school, I was able to do that calculation. And so I got my real estate license. <laughs> I, I was 18 and I was a real estate broker, which is the highest level designation for selling real estate here in the States. And because you could do it back then through education rather than experience. Now you have to have experience. But um, I, uh, I got my broker's license and didn't know what I was doing. I, I put a bus bench down at the end of the street with my picture on it, which didn't give me any business, but made my mother proud. And, uh, you know, just really didn't make much money my first two years in the business. But then my third year, after, you know, drinking through a fire hose, studying the business and networking and learning the business. And the most important piece, I think, is, is that study turned into confidence that competence turned into confidence. And, and I made a lot of money my third year and really never looked back and, and then started buying property and uh, houses in Denver, ended up buying 500 houses in Denver that I rented out. And then ultimately bought uh, 200 houses in Memphis, Tennessee, and then ultimately bought over 13, uh, 13 to 1400 houses in Florida. But um, you know, that, that, that house that my mom bought across the street with her babysitting money was the impetus. Brilliant. So with, with uh, just out of interest with that, so what was the capital like at the time? You got 500 uh, properties. How did you manage to do that? How? What do you mean? You mean, you mean where did I come up with the ability financially? Yeah, yeah the financial. Sure. Well, um, and if money is just a thought, money is really, in my opinion, it's knowledge, it's education, because I bought 500 houses with partners. I had my partners put up all the money. I managed them for half the deal. I ultimately bought out all my partners, but, but they put up the money to buy the house. Money is really just, in that case, it was, my, it was my competence and my confidence, which equated to my ability to influence that got me those first 500 houses. And so I think that's the case and, and, and really, it backs right down. It, it, it comes right back to psychology again. I had the I, I had the psychology necessary to be congruent when I was communicating with potential partners and investors, and had the ability to influence them. Brilliant. So, so that yeah. that just shows to say that you don't really need to have a big bag of money to start business. You absolutely, do not. You need to be willing to learn and study and 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 focus on the psychology as well. You know, I, I my podcast. I, I do two sections a week, and one of them, yeah, you know, one of them is just an interview with an expert in the in the multifamily business. But the second one, I call your driving for success tips, and they're really all about the psychology of success. I talk about everything from goal setting to you know determining what your why is because your why drive your goals to responsibility to fear to confidence to you know you know once you have and, the, the, the right mindset it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter where you're coming from you can still get where you want to go so and, would you and, say and, and you can get through any obstacles that pop up in your way really? um, yeah. That, yeah that's an important piece because anyone that wants to get into business of any sort is going to have setbacks they're going to have inevitable things that come up so it's critical that they have clearly defined goals, clearly defined reasons why those goals are a must so that, you know, they don't lose focus and lose sight of those goals um, when those inevitable setbacks occur. Wow, that's very good. Have you had any uh, sort of, what sort of uh, barriers have you had to go, jump over or overcome or fears that you've had to overcome uh, in your business? What, what's the greatest one you can tell us about and how well, you managed to overcome biggest, that? The biggest one, of course, was 2008. I, I mean, I, I thought I was set for life. I thought 80 million United States baby boomers that were getting older and getting colder would ensure that Florida was, was recession-proof. Well, I got that seminar, and uh, Florida was one of the hardest-hit states. But, mm. you know, getting past the fact that, that everything I'd worked for was – had evaporated and 
know, I had to start all over. You know, that's that's a that's a very challenging uh, obstacle. And and again, had I not had my mind right, and you know, not not been not been had the had the the uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Had not been blessed to have been around Tony Robbins, frankly. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, it could have really devastated me, and, and it could have really prevented me from pushing forward. But it, I mean, I'm stronger than I was back then now, and, and have rebuilt. And but but it was a tough time. It was a very very painful time. And and you know, it it uh, it it was a lot of soul searching. And and but but then again, then getting back to goals, getting back to having you know keeping keeping focused on what I want versus what I don't want. The key, mm. the key success for anyone is to focus on what you want, not the things that you don't want. And so, uh, and it's difficult to do. It's so easy in this negative media environment to, to focus on the negative, but you get what you focus on. And, and frankly, it doesn't matter how big it is. If, if, if you want it bad enough and you're, and you're willing to work to get it, there's nothing you can't do. And if you, focus on what's wrong, it will magnify. Yeah. Wow, that's a good lesson to learn. That's a very, very good one. So um, in terms of the, the struggles and what motivates you when you feel like you're not having a very good day and you're struggling to what, keep what motivates things. me? What motivates me? Uh, yeah, what motivates you? Well, you know, I, write, I write my goals almost every day. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I'm looking at my computer monitor as we're speaking here, and I have things written, goals written. If I mm -hmm. moved my camera around the office, I will show you, just because you can see me. Uh -huh. There are some of my sayings on the wall. Oh, my God. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Here are, here are some of my goals. Wow. And just like you said, you were just reading Think and Grow Rich. There's yeah. my definiteness of purpose statement yeah see it so yeah. that's that's from grow rich and so so you know what motivates me and what i teach people when i coach people and and on my podcast is you have to clearly define your goals that's number one number yeah. two you have to write down a paragraph for each important goal particularly let's say your four one-year goals why they're an absolute must mm -hmm. and i recommend not just writing down the positive, like because I'll feel great or I'll have accomplished so much and I'll, I'll do this for my family or for myself, I recommend also writing negative reasons why. Like, I don't want to feel like a failure. I don't want to feel like I let my family down. And I realize that that sounds challenging, but people will do more to avoid pain than they will to gain pleasure. And so I recommend writing positive and negative wise on your goals. And then I recommend doing what I just showed you, which is having pictures of your goals. Now I will tell you, and, I, and, and again, you can see this, no one in your article will be able to see this, but I have pictures in my planner right here that I've had what? in here for 16, 17 years. And what the, and I first, I first and, and I recommend getting pictures goals. Now the first few pictures I have are gratitude pictures because everything comes from a place of gratitude. Mm -hmm. then, I, then I've got pictures of things that I've wanted, the houses I've wanted, the uh, the um, watches I've wanted. The wow! Okay. I wanted. Nice. You know what's astounding is three fourths of the things in this planner that I'm in every day I've gotten, and I've gotten them because I focused on what I wanted, and you know like like uh, the the runaway book that did really well this this the secret and the movie the secret about the law of attraction yeah you know, that stuff works it absolutely works and, okay. and you know i realize there are some analytical people that may see this article and think to themselves no you know that's not true but i can tell you i've manifested everything i've wanted in my life including my wife it says meet my soul let mate and start the love story because you have to Put these things in front of you so that your mind sees them and, and and there's something in your mind called the reticular activating system and what it is to kind of simplify an explanation is you know when you first buy a car you probably never noticed that car but when you buy the car you see them everywhere and, 
And the same thing applies to your goals. You have to write down your, uh, you know, get pictures of your goals and keep them in your forefront. And your, your mind will recognize opportunities to get you closer to your goals. So, you know, that's, that's my advice um, uh, as it relates to getting through obstacles. And because if you know what your outcome is and you know why it's a must, if you hit an obstacle, you'll change your approach. And, mm -hmm. and, and if you hit another obstacle, you'll change your approach again. And you may come at your goal from multiple angles, but ultimately you'll get it as long as you have a powerful enough reason why it's a must. So, you know, uh, I like to tell the story when I was 16 years old, mm -hmm. uh, when I had my, when I got, actually when I was 18, when I got my broker's license in real estate, I had this ugly Ford was called a Ford Granada, and it was a four-door car because I was told that all real estate brokers had to have a four-door car to take people around to look at properties. The ugliest thing you ever you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I I was lucky enough to drive my boss's uh, Corvette, mm -hmm. and so I got a picture of that Corvette, and I put it on the visor, the sun visor of that Granada. Within two years, I had the Corvette. Wow. And, <laughs> and then. You know, I wanted, I wanted a Ferrari back then. And I'm going to, these examples I'm giving you are not to brag, but they're really just my story. And they're no, really man, story. very helpful. Yeah, but they're the only story I can share. And these things really don't even interest me anymore. Let me preface what I'm going to say now by telling you these things don't even interest me anymore. But, but at that time, there was a show called Magnum P.I. And the actress' name was Tom Selleck. He had a Ferrari 308, a beautiful red Ferrari. Yeah. Yes. Show, and I wanted that car. So I got a picture, and this was before the internet, I got a picture of that car out of a magazine, I put that on the visor of my Corvette. Two years later, approximately, I got a Maserati that looked almost exactly like that Ferrari. So that, then the last, the last car example I'll give you is mm -hmm. I always wanted a Lamborghini. I'm the, I'm the guy that had the posters of the Lamborghini in his bedroom when I was growing up with the girls with the bikinis. In fact, in the planner, I just showed you in the back, I even told my son when he was about eight years old that I had always wanted one. I was thinking about it, and he got pictures in his room. He actually got a model of the exact same color and style because he collected these exotic uh, car models. He had about mm -hmm. 20 of them. He got a model of the exact same color and style of Lamborghini that I ended up getting. So wow. visualization works, uh, okay? And and, you know, I could give examples. I, I always wanted a house on the beach. And I, for 20 years, I wanted a house on the beach. And I ultimately, you know, got that beautiful, beautiful giant home on the beach that I built. But wow. I do want to give you one caveat as mm -hmm. it relates to that story. Um, I was, I was, uh, because goals are very, very important. But you have to, you have to be very, very careful when you reach a goal that you have other goals set up beyond that because past like, that. Yep. The, good, the good book says without a vision the people perish and you need a vision for the future yep. and I was I was uh, floating in my pool in this in this in the pool of this home in this magnificent eight million dollar testament to my ego you know ten thousand square foot home with the beach on one side and the bay on the other side and I'm looking up at this giant home and I said I'd achieved everything I'd ever wanted and I got very depressed Mm. And I couldn't understand why I was depressed. And, you know, and, and I, I, I actually, this was back in 2000. And when I look back on it, two things that happened. One was what I just, what I just mentioned. I achieved this goal and I didn't have any other goals set up. And I, so I needed a vision for the future. That's number one. But number two is I wasn't fulfilled. Mm. And there's a big difference between success and fulfillment. And, you know, I know billionaires that are they're very, very successful, but they're not fulfilled. In fact, Tony Robbins calls it the uh, science of achievement versus the art of fulfillment. And I wasn't fulfilled. And so I added contribution and charity to my life, and that gave me fulfillment. And I will tell your readers that I know they may be interested in success, but they need to make sure they incorporate giving back into their lives because that's where true happiness is. Comes from. That's good. That's that's very good. Is that the, the I've seen some on your Facebook pictures. You've got some bears that you're giving away and things oh, like yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah, 
you. Yeah, no, I, I started a foundation back in uh, back in 2000. I, 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 uh, I, you know, Tony Robbins feeds millions of families a year, and I decided to feed five families. So I, we mm -hmm. we got for Thanksgiving. So we got went out and got food, and we delivered food to five families. And the second or third family changed my life. I, I walked up to the door in this decrepit house, and this woman came out, and she saw the food and started crying and then her five children came out and they saw the food and started crying and mm -hmm. then I started crying and I was hooked and so the next year I fed 50 families and the next year 100 families and then 200 families and then 400 families that doubled every year and then in 2006 I fed 1600 families and I paid for it and I, I, I wasn't taking contributions or anything but then 2007 happened and I formed a foundation called the Tiny Hands Foundation, and we have now fed over 50,000 children for the holidays. Um, mm -hmm. I have given thousands of backpacks filled with school supplies to local school children so they had basic school supplies. And we've given thousands of teddy bears to police departments for the officers to put in their vehicles when they encounter a child that may have experienced a traumatic experience. And that's been my greatest joy. That's been my fulfillment. And uh, But I will tell you, and, and that's, I will tell you that it doesn't require anything of that magnitude to feel fulfilled. You can just make a decision to smile at everybody you see today and, and send love to everybody you see. You can make a decision to buy the person behind you at Starbucks a cup of coffee, you mm -hmm. know, or just to do something for someone. It doesn't require big, grand gestures. But if you're interested in success, do not lose sight of the fact that you're really in this world to be happy mm -hmm. and that, that all of the success is really your vehicle in your mind to become happy and you can become happy instantly by giving love and happiness and contributing to other people wow thank you for that that's very that's very insightful and that's uh, that's really reassuring to know that you don't lose track and you keep moving with the things that um that are, that are important to you just one last question I have for you. So if there were three things you'd give to somebody who's starting out today on the journey, where you were years back, what would those three things be? You're asking me on the journey to their... To vision. where you are now. So if somebody is starting out in their entrepreneurial journey or you know, right. wanting, wanting to build a life for themselves, what are the three things that you'd share with them that they should look, look out for? Okay, well, the, the first thing I would do is definitely be very, very clear on establishing your goals and clearly defining them. I take people through a goal setting workshop um, that, that, you know, my students and I basically tell them uh, to sit down with a sheet of paper or, or a notebook and write down everything they could ever possibly want in their life. Okay. Mm. So this is, and, and write down, and, and take the lid off their brain, because more people, people will spend more time planning the holidays or planning Christmas than they do planning their lives. So take, take the time to write down your goals. Then circle, then write a number by each goal, and then you should have a big list. I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying write down private islands, private jets, uh, multiple houses, the things you'll do for other people, the things you'll do for your children, uh, cars, boats you know, things you want to learn, um, hobbies you want to, to, to explore, everything you could possibly have as a goal. And then, then take and write down how many years it's going to take to achieve each one of those goals, one year, three year, five year, 10 year, or 20 year. And write down a number by each goal. Then I tell people, pick your top four one year goals and write those down and then write down the why, like I described, the positive whys and the negative whys, why those are a must. And use emotionally charged language because language will move you. And so use words like incredible and massive and, and, uh, mm. and things that will move you. Then take it one step further and go on Google and find pictures that, that, that kind of denote those goals that move you emotionally. Get those pictures. Have them blown up. It's very inexpensive to do it these days at a drugstore. I have them framed like I showed you in my office and yeah. have those uh, pictures in front of you, wherever you are. I have them in my exercise room. I have them in my office here at home, my office at, at, at work. And so that they're always in front of me. I showed you they're in my planner. I have pictures of these goals. So that's very, very important. So that's step number one. Okay. Step mm -hmm. number two, 
I would, you know, educate yourself in whatever it is, wherever you want to go. And there, there's so many resources now online. If you want to learn about real estate, um, well, let me tell you, if you're interested in multifamily real estate, I'll give your listeners my free book. They can, it's free for another probably 60 days and it's going to go on Amazon, but um, okay. yeah, it's on my website, rodcleef.com. That's R-O-D-K-H-L-E-I-F.com. It's a direct download. And it's 200 pages. It's like a textbook about multifamily investing. So that's free to your readers. Now, Thank you. My pleasure. And, but, but whatever it is you want to get into, whatever business, you need, to, you need to learn it so that you develop that competence, like I said, which will equate to confidence, which will then equate to your ability to influence and influence potential investors in your business, partners in your business, customers in your business. But you've got to be competent. So that be, that's the only way you'll be confident, okay? So that's number two. Number three, I would say give back. Make sure that you're incorporating fulfillment into your life. Make sure that you're giving. You know, people that are depressed are focusing inward. They're focused on themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anyone that focuses on other people will be happy. Focus on adding value to other people, even if it's just in a small way. Those are the three recipes for success, in my opinion. Is there any projects that you're doing at the moment that you'd like to let people know about? Yeah, you know, I've created I've created a course and a membership site for anyone that's interested in real estate or property, uh, be it houses or multifamily. Uh, it'll be on my website at rodcleave.com, and it really, frankly, humbly, will be. I think the best material on the market in the United States or abroad. And so if anybody's interested, that will be there. But, you know, I hope that I've inspired some of your readers and I hope that um, more than anything else, they'll take action on their dreams. So many people just sit and dream, but they never take action. So hopefully, if I've inspired one person to take action on their, on their goals and their dreams, then we've accomplished. Yeah, put, put the link for the podcast. Cause I really think that, you know, I, I'm going to hit a million downloads the short time that it's been up. And I, but I think it's been well received because we are adding a lot of value. So I hope your readers feel the same way. Yeah. But true. Thank true. you for having me on your, uh, thank you for allowing me to um, help you in this. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time.